Welcome to the ACME presentation on migrating to a cloud strategy. Uh, for today, we're going to be taking a look at the team's recommendation um, and talk about a potential cloud first strategy. We're going to go through an executive summary. Uh, we're going to talk about what is cloud computing and then what's the role of IT in a cloud computing environment. And then finally, we'll give you our conclusions or recommendations. So first of all, let's take a look at one of the uh, research articles we ran, at, ran into um, from RightScale uh, Company. It's research on developing a cloud strategy. And what we wanted to share with you is that when they went out and talked to uh, various companies, they found that 81% of enterprises have a multi-cloud strategy. Um, we're one of those companies that doesn't, and we would like to talk to you about actually creating a cloud strategy and how we might put that together. So for our team, uh, we have Sean McGrath, he's our CTO. Paul Clement represented the business side and is Chief Financial Officer. And I'm involved in strategic planning for the organization. So 53% of, of organizations are consciously using cloud computing in some shape or form. Um, many of our employees are already using the cloud. Some are using it for shadow IT, Others are using it for personal solutions. Uh, it is our belief that it's time for our, our organization to take advantage of some of the same type of tools that our employees are using every day in their personal life. But the first step is to create a cloud strategy, one that supports our business objectives now and in the future. We can then define a governance approach that aligns with the business outcomes that we desire. Um, note that we are recommending a cloud first strategy. Basically, that means that when we're identifying a new solution that we need to put in, um, it needs to be a solution that's probably on the cloud. Uh, we're not recommending that we continue to grow our on-premise solution. Um, this will take us in the right direction. But we'll talk more about that later. All right, so what is the cloud? Well, for the purposes of our conversation, uh, let's take a look at it this way. There are applications that we can just pay for. Um, Office 365 is a good example. Uh, Salesforce is another example. These are what we call software as a service solutions. Um, they, you just rent the application, you get your data protected, you get upgrades, everything's included. So it really is a top tier solution um, in terms of giving you everything you need at a fixed operational cost. The second opportunity is to look at what's called platform as a service. And this is where we take our custom applications um, and take them out of a pre-existing uh, on-prem environment and moving it to a well-defined environment up in the cloud. Um, it's great for us to be able to do that because we don't have to worry about patching the OS, those type of things, but it basically takes what we have and just moves it to a cloud environment. And then last but not least is our real custom applications um, need to be moved to an infrastructure as a service. And this is where we're basically buying floor space, hardware, network, electricity, uh, but we still manage the operating system. We still manage the application. So support's a little bit higher in that environment, but it gives us full flexibility. flexibility. And ultimately the goal is to have an environment that provides us the flexibility or what we call elasticity um, that we need to grow or shrink based upon how the business has grown. All right, so let's take a look at the cloud, basic capabilities of the cloud. Talked a little bit about on-prem. This is where we have hardware and operating systems, and electricity, internet, all in our environment. We may actually rent floor space, um, but this is where we control almost everything A to Z. Hybrid environment is where we start that transition. We move things from on-prem to a full cloud solution. So we got a little bit in on-prem, a little bit in probably infrastructure as a service. Um, speaking of IaaS, um, typical examples are AWS, Azure, that type of thing. Um, it also can be a situation where we're just leasing equipment from a provider that would include the floor, the power, hardware, and OS. Um, so that would be you know kind of a co-location facility. Platform as a service is where we lease the application stack from a provider. Um, you know, you see things, database as a service, communications as a service, those type of applications fall under PaaS. And then finally, software as a service, this is where we just lease the application. We don't care about the OS, we don't care about managing the database. All we're doing is getting the services that we need. 
All right, no questions. So let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of cloud compute. First of all, total cost of ownership. Um, when you go to a cloud, your TCO is going to go down. When you take a look at the picture in terms of how much our people cost, power, internet, maintenance, support, um, that gets to be a pretty big number. So we are looking at TCO going down. Secondly, resource cost. If we don't own the hardware, if we don't own the operating system, that's much less that we have to maintain and pay for. And then last but not least, um, implementation. Uh, we can put implement, implementing, ah, implementing new systems fairly easily because everything's already up and running. And then I forgot innovation. Uh, this is where we can bring in new features on a consistent basis uh, without having to write code, without having to do a major upgrade. The vendor takes care of this for us so that we get all the new features, all the new capabilities on a pretty regular basis. Disadvantages. Well, okay, let's be honest here. Everybody has downtime. We have downtime. Uh, but sometimes it can be a little frustrating when you're paying for a service and the application goes down and maybe it's down for three hours. Um, you know, that does happen. Not very often, but it does happen. Security and privacy is one of those weird things. Um, you know, most vendors, depending on which level you're talking about, take care of some of your security. Um, but we have situations where you know, let's say we're doing a infrastructure as a service where we may be responsible for our own data security. So maybe not getting the full flexibility that we'd like. There's also a challenge from the perspective of the court system. Um, when it being on-prem, uh, the courts have to come to us, give us a subpoena, we extract the data that we want and turn it over to the courts. In the case of using a cloud environment, they're gonna subpoena the vendor that is providing that service, which means we may never even see it. So that's something to be concerned about. Vulnerability for attacks, uh, yeah, you know, we're all vulnerable, but when you're on a big cloud environment, they're getting attacked far more often than would be in our own data center. Uh, on the other side of that, they also are gonna have people that are a lot more experienced at protecting the environments and making sure that attackers can't get in versus for us, that's an expense that would be very hard for us to cover based upon our smaller needs. Limited control and flexibility, we are giving up control, right? We're giving it up to a manufacturer, to a vendor who's gonna be providing the solution and we have to live within their, um, their needs, their desires to do things. And then finally, dependencies. Um, you know, here we control everything that we're dependent on. Where when we get out to a cloud environment, there's going to be dependencies, there's gonna be integrations of different systems that we may just not have as much control over. So we did a SWOT analysis. This gives you kind of an idea of where some of the concerns are in terms of you know, the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Um, but let's talk about some of the big items. First of all, rapid elasticity. Um, as we, our needs increase, the service provider can provide new services. As we get new features, new functionalities, they're going to implement that, and it's just up to us to take advantage of it. There really is no need to supply software, server, hardware as we grow. We just continue to buy more services and as our needs goes down, we lower those services. Um, and then a big item is we won't have hardware sitting there doing nothing that we're paying for. And then we think you'll also find that cloud computing efficiencies are improving as a result of the increased bandwidth capacity. So what do we mean by that? Is as our pipe to the internet gets bigger and bigger, there's a lot more things that we can do. You know, five years ago, it was a very small pipe coming in here as a T1 circuit, um, and it's very limited on how much we could do outside. But today, we've got almost a gigabyte coming into the office. So there's really no reason why we can't get everything we need off the cloud. So let's look at the economic app implications. Um, resource utilization, as I mentioned before, is a major factor in optimizing infrastructure. For example, if only 15% of our overall infrastructure is not being used, that's a capital investment of $1.4 million that could be used in areas that are better aligned with our business operations or business outcomes um, versus having a server that's sitting there that's just not doing anything right now. Um, you know, and we're talking about DR servers, we're talking about training servers, all of those things that we have up and running just in case we ever need them. Um, we have consolidated servers wherever possible, but, you know, we found a number of our applications have had conflicts running on, you know, the same kind of hardware. And we've had to break them back apart so that they didn't have that conflict. 
So we've expanded into a virtual environment, which does let us run multiple servers on a single box. Um, and that's great. It takes care of some of the problems, um, specifically around isolation. Uh, but cloud servers is our next step. This is where we get out of the business of trying to manage all this and trying to figure out what's going to fight with another application. All right, so what is the role of IT in this cloud-first organization that we're talking about? Um, starting off, cloud use is minimal, um, and so there's you know not a real big difference. But as we grow, what we've seen or what we found in our research is that IT really wants to be involved in selecting the public clouds. Um, they really want to be involved in advising on which apps move to the cloud. And then they want to also select when is it going to be in a private cloud. What we found in our research is that business has a little bit of a different perspective on it. Um, only 41% of the companies came back and said, yeah, they see IT as really selecting the public cloud environment. 45% uh, on advising which apps move to the cloud. And then 38% on selecting the private clouds. So there's a pretty big gap in there, you know, close to 30% on IT's perspective versus the business perspective. But what we found in our research is that cloud users really underestimate how much waste they're doing with their cloud spend. They go out, they buy a server, they buy new capabilities, new functions, and what they find out is that they just aren't using it. So they're spending money every month for cloud services that just are not being used effectively. So really optimizing cloud costs is the top initiative among people that have been doing this for a while. 64% are really focused on how do we optimize our cloud spend. All right, so we took our current environment, these are the specs that we used, and we priced it out in terms of what we want, you know, what it would cost us to run it both on-prem versus running it in the cloud. And here's what we came up with. Um, and as you can see, you know, as we get more and more servers in the public cloud, our costs go down um, on our price per server basis. And we believe that we can really reduce our total cost of ownership by almost 80% um, by making this move. All right, so what's next? First, we're suggesting let's create a governance model. Second, let's identify the apps, you know, that real low hanging fruit. Um, where we can move something across fairly cheaply and get real high benefit, especially if we're looking at replacing an app. Um, this is our opportunity to look at a cloud app first. Um, set up an initial cloud um, based upon those apps that we've selected. Let's identify the vendor that will give us the longest term value. And then start the migration. We'll go through this in an iterative model, identifying more apps, getting the cloud environment ready, and starting the migration. It's going to take some time. But this is the best way to do it and have minimal impact on our organization. Questions, thoughts? All right, sounds good. So it looks like we've got approval to get started. We're going to put a team together to get the governance model going, and we'll start identifying the apps. Thank you so much for your time.